When you think of Windows, you think of the Start menu. And the Start menu started with Windows 95, and now we can see it on Linux and a number of other operating systems. Now, while the Start menu has evolved over the years, I don't think it's evolved in the right way. Originally, the Start menu was a utilitarian tool to allow you to organize things any way you like, but it's evolved in a weird way. It's now become a delivery mechanism for corporations to sort of force feed you what they think is important. So it's no longer about you being able to organize what you think is important. It's about them pushing what they think is important and giving you all kinds of nonsense apps and cluttering it up. I don't even know who this is. You can undo this, but a lot of times when there's an update, all that junk just comes right back. So I found it's usually easier just to ignore the Windows Start menu altogether and replace it with a couple of different tools. So in this video, we're going to go through the three big ones, and that's Open Shell, Start All Back, and then Stardox, Start 11. I'm going to tell you which one I like the best, but there may be some features of the other ones that you think fits your style better. So by all means, Look at this video and pick the one that you think is going to be best for the way that you do your work on your computer. So let's jump right in and the first thing we're going to do is unlock our copy of Windows. We'll do the ad first for that. Make sure you've got your copy of Windows completely unlocked with one of our OEM keys from the partner that I use to unlock all of my Windows keys. I actually pay for them when I use them and that's who keys. Because if you go and buy a full on retail key from Microsoft, it's going to cost you a lot more than this. Now, what's the difference in this and an OEM key? Well, an OEM key is generally tied to your hardware. So if you upgrade, you may need to replace your key. But when you look at the difference in price between this and one of the full priced, you know, keys that you get from Microsoft, you could buy this many, many, many times and still save money. And we have a coupon code right now. If you use coupon code TS25, it'll bring this price down. Right now, these Windows 10 keys are less expensive and Windows 10 Pro will unlock Windows 11. So at the time I'm making this video, that works. You may want to Google it if you get it a year from now. So we have Windows 11 Pro. We've got Windows 10 Pro. If you want to get home. We've got those to save a little money. If you purchase a computer and you've got Windows Home on there, you can always get Pro and that'll upgrade you. And then we have two flavors of Office. We've got 2019 and 2016, but with coupon code TS25, you're going to get 25% off. Now, once you buy it, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. I don't like the fact that OEMs and corporations get these ridiculously cheap OEM prices, and then we have to go and pay an exorbitant amount of money for the same thing. You're getting the exact same desktop experience for a fraction of the price, so head over to whokeys.com and get your Windows activated. All right, let's look at Open Shell. Now this is a GitHub project, but all the old classic shell skins work with Open Shell. So just click on releases over here on the right, click on that, and you'll be able to come and grab the latest version. I've already got it installed, so let's go ahead and go through it. When you first open it, you're gonna see this. You'll be able to click your style. We'll go through all the styles. First off, we'll start with the classic style, and I'm gonna put it on the classic skin just so we can get the full experience. Classic with the classic. Notice that apps and programs are two separate folders, so that's a little bonus. All the Metro apps are here. All your real programs are here. Utilitarian, no nonsense. All the nonsense is here. And then you have a little section here where you can add whatever you like. To just drag and drop, you can do that, or you can right click and click on open, and that'll bring you to your shortcuts area in your start menu. And you can just drag and drop shortcuts right here, and they're gonna appear right up here, and they'll appear on every menu. This is really kind of like Windows XP, so let's get a Windows XP skin, shall we? We've got Windows XP Luna. And which one do you like? Blue? Let's just do blue to keep it old school. And there we go. Now we've got our Windows XP style and you can customize these things. And you know what? If you don't like this Windows XP skin and you're like, I want to get a different one, just go online. You can browse around. You can use any skin from the Classic Shell forum. You can look on DVNR. There are some skins. You can download them and they just go right into your program files, open shell skins folder, really easy. All right, the next skin is the Windows 7 style. And you know what, I'm gonna put this on arrow. Some of these will only be available if you're using a certain type. So the arrow, there we go. And then everything comes up in here. Now the benefit of that is if you don't have a lot of space or you're running at a low resolution, a lot of times the menus can get a little bit crazy. So they'll start expanding way out here. That's not too much of a problem. If you have a big monitor, you know, you won't have to worry about all this stuff expanding all the way across. Now, if you want to customize this even further, it's very easy. You right click out of your settings, you can change the taskbar color and opacity. Sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> why are we doing this? Why not? So you can customize all that and you can even change your start button, which is really easy to do. I've already got mine changed to this one. You can go online and get replacement start menus as well. You can just search for replacement start orbs. How about some Windows XP style? You want to go crazy? Let's do it. Why not? Oh, that's ugly. Try a few different sizes. There we go. Oh, look at that. You can see I've got way more options now because I clicked on show all options. There are so many options. I'm not going to go through everything. Opaque or a translucent. Let's change this color to something blue so we can make it look right. Oh, that <laughs> this feels so wrong. It looks like Windows XP, but it ain't. This feel, This is Windows 11. We are using Windows 11. All right, so there's a lot of different options that you can go through. If you go to show all settings, it's a ridiculous amount of stuff. Now, the last thing I want to do is check out the search box. If you want to be able to just hit start and start typing, well, you can do that as well. Just come up here and click access search normally. So I want to see how the search works. So let's search for mouse. And here are the settings we've got. We've got our settings and then we've got our control panel. These are going to be your modern settings and this is going to be your old school stuff, which is what I wanted because I got to make sure enhanced pointer precision is turned off. Uh, let's do remove. All right, we got some cool stuff here. Add or remove stuff, uh, add or remove programs. There we go. Bring us right here. We can uninstall stuff. And you can even come into your search and turn off all the web stuff. Right here, I've got search for keywords turned off. I've got files, search the internet, all turned off. So tons of custom mobility. I'm not going to go through every option here. I'll make a separate tutorial on how to use that. Now I think it's time to uninstall this and go on to the next one. But to sum it up, open shell has an enormous amount of options. It's free. There's a ridiculous number of skins and things that you can download online. You can pick your own button. And then it really just covers the classic Windows XP style and the Windows 7 style. Nothing beyond that. But the functionality is such that you can really create something that's different from all of those and kind of all your own. So it does have a lot of the modern convenience with the style and functionality of the older themes. If you really like the layout and the functionality of the older themes, then this one's probably going to be the one for you. Plus, it's free. Let's install Start All Back. Now this was, I believe, one of the first ones that was available for Windows 11 before Open Shell was available. So it kind of got a jump there. And we also have a license key that you can purchase for one PC, $5, two, $8.99, and three, $11.99. This is more than Open Shell because it also messes with the taskbar, Windows Explorer, and your flyout menus over here on the right. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and pick proper 11. Now that's going to give us the Windows 11 style. See, with Windows 11 style, you cannot drag and drop here but you do have this ability here to have tabs. And then it maintains Windows 11 style throughout everything else. Now, if we change it to kind of 10, well, that changes the taskbar to look like 10. And then when we open up File Explorer, now we have the ribbon from 10. We can drag and drop now, see? With the Windows 11 style. I don't know why they took that away. Then our flyouts over here are going to be the Windows 10 style instead of that big bulky uh, Windows 11 style thing. Then we have Remastered 7. So Remastered 7 gives you like an arrow theme, much more seamless when it comes to like you know, changing things. And this, there we go. So even now we've got remastered Windows 7. A lot of this stuff is still just floating around in Windows. And then when we open up the Explorer, we have this contextual uh, little bar on the top so that we have different contextual options up here depending on what we click on. All of this can be done with other programs, but this is all done within one program. Then we have our Start menu here. So the Welcome picks basically the skin and the environment. Then the Start menu is where we pick the start menu. So there's seven and you can change the icon size. You can change the icon count, use large icons. This is the normal Windows 7 style. It opened up in here. Do the flyout and it'll open up like this. All of this you can do with open shell, but again, you can do this very easily. And the interface is quite a bit nicer in my opinion than open shell. I guess you're paying for it so they make it nicer. Now we can choose what we want on there. I want my downloads to be a link and I want my, and then the control panel. Let's have that be a menu. So now we've got these extra links over here, like our network and our network connections. And I change control panel into a menu, which means it's going to be a flyout. Let me show you the other start menu styles we have. We have the default. There we go. Just your standard default. And then we also have just plain eight. So again, all of these are very similar. Moving on down to taskbar, you can change your icon size from small, medium to large and extra large, but that's going to resize the whole thing. I love the fact that it resizes all the icons down here. Then we can change our icon margins, make it a small margin if you want them close together, you want them really far apart. It's all up to you. You have a lot of options here. You can also use our own start buttons. So let's go ahead and click on one of those. There we go. And there that is. You can add uh, multiple new start buttons. Let's do a blue one. Why not? Actually, let's do a little Windows XP. That's always fun. Well, that's goofy looking. So it expects something square. So that one doesn't work very well. So whereas up here, you can just pick a, a theme for everything. When you get down here and start messing with the individual things, you can mix and match and say, okay, I want the Windows 7 theme for the flyout here. 
and then with Explorer, I want the Windows 10 ribbon. I want the mica effect. You've got all these different things that you can change granularly instead of just coming up to the welcome and clicking on one. So it's just, you know, how nerdy do you want to get? It's nowhere near as nerdy as OpenShell, but you can do some things with this that you can't do with OpenShell. Now we also have our coloration. So let's change some colors here and see what happens. So we also have our classic context menu, which is your right click menu. So you don't have to have the Windows 11 nonsense where you have to click more to see the actual context menu. Now we have all the options available to us. So that's here as well. So this one does um, a bit more and a bit less when compared to OpenShell. Cost money has a really slick interface and it does have some pretty good options. The last thing we'll do is the search. So let's search for mouse. All right, and it brings up the settings on top. I don't see the old control panel stuff, so I'll have to go here to settings. All right, let's try some different search options. Try mouse again. And yeah, it's just showing me the modern stuff, so I'm not able to get. Maybe if I go to mouse pointer size? No, that's still bringing me here. So yeah, it's taking me to the modern stuff. I'm not sure how to get around that here. All right, let's search for remove. And we've got, uh, this list is not as pleasing as the other one. Hmm, that was not pleasant to get there, but we're here. All right, it's time to uninstall this and try start 11. It uninstalls and installs much better than OpenShell. OpenShell needed a reboot. All right, now we're gonna try start 11. You can try it for free for 30 days, so we're gonna use that option. If you wanna purchase it, $6.99, five installs for $14.99. Stardock makes lots of different things, plus some really good games. So this is just one of the things that they make. All right, when you first start it up, it's gonna ask you if you want left or right aligned, and then you get to pick your style. Now, this one has more styles out of the box, and there's a lot of things that we can do because we have a sub style. So you pick your main style. Let's say we want Windows 7, and then our sub style can be compact. So let's just try the Windows 7 on Windows 7 and show you what that looks like. And there we go, we got like the standard Windows 7, everything opens up in here but the sub-styles, compact Windows 7 style. So now we've got the little icons on the side instead. We've got our grid, which now turns the middle into a grid there. If you just want, and you can just add stuff here if you wanted to add more shortcuts or whatever. These are your recent programs. Up here is gonna be your shortcuts. Let's see if we can drag and drop. There we go. So that's cool that you can drag and drop stuff up here. We got our compact grid, which this means compact on the side. Windows 7 style with icons. So there we got our icons beside everything. And then our grid, uh, Windows 7 style with icons. Just big everything. So pick the style that you like and then pick the sub style. So nothing super old other than Windows 7, no classic style. There's the Windows 10 style. And look at that, all this area for activities. So if you like Windows 8 and 10, then you can Windows app style. They don't have sub styles because they're not compatible with that. So only modern style and the Windows 7 style have the sub styles. Let's take a look at our start button and see what we can do. We can pick some images here. So let's use a custom start button, pick our image. And this one's cool because it comes with all kinds of interesting uh, start buttons already. So if there's a certain one you like, you can just use that. How about this triangle? Why not? Now, if you want to take over the taskbar as well, well, we can do that. We're going to enhance the taskbar, yes. And then right here, there's a little drop down. A lot of people are going to miss it. Here you can pick your behavior. So I'm going to tell it to always combine. All right, this controls the way things pin. Here's our search options. And if you have everything installed, this is really cool. Some people love using everything. So that's pretty interesting that it allows you to search everything. If you know what that is, then you know what that is. And you can see the rest of the search options. Now here we have our options on what does what. You can set it up so that if you click this, it opens up the Windows 11 start menu. Um, and you can also set it up so that if the button will open the Windows 11 start menu and the other one opens the start 11 menu. So it's up to you how you want to do that. I much prefer the way OpenShell does it because you can hold down the shift and press start and have that open Windows 11 and then have the start and the click both open the menu. So it's up to you how you like to do it. Let's try the search and see how that works. We'll search for mouse. I really like the search because it gives us different you know, uh, things here. On top, we've got our control panel. And below that, we've got our settings and then our documents and our files. It's very well organized. And this takes me where I wanted to go. So I believe this search is really, really high up there. Typing remove, add or remove devices, add or remove programs. There we go. And we can uninstall this way. So that's it. I'm going to uninstall this one. I think it has the cleanest looking search and highly configurable as well. So Start 11 doesn't give you as much control over your Explorer or your taskbar flyouts over here. You're still gonna have this uh, Windows 11 monstrosity, but we can fix that as well. There's a little program called Explorer Patcher, and I've made a video on this that has a lot of hits, so I'll link that in the description below. So when you install Explorer Patcher, and then you right click on your taskbar, now you have all the options to change how things work. I want my file explorer, I want to disable the Windows 11 context menu, you can control all that stuff.
Now, if you're okay going full nerd, then get OpenShell. It does give you the most options, but you're also going to have to pair that with Explorer Patcher if you want to completely fix the way everything works. I'm talking the flyouts over here. Now, we want to change all this stuff? Yes. You're going to need Explorer Patcher, so you're going to have to have two things running. The same is true for Start 11. Start 11 has a really nice interface, and in my opinion, the best search, but I don't think it's good enough to justify the price when we have OpenShell that does us such a good job and actually gives us better classic theming options. If there's some feature of Start 11 that you really, really love, then you can go for that one. But remember, if you also want to do all the other stuff, like have the Windows 10 bar on the top, or, or even change that. Let's say I want to go over here and say File Explorer. Uh, I want to do the Windows 11 bar, the classic bar. There we go. Reset File Explorer just to make sure it works. And now we've got the classic so we can add the different tabs and stuff. If you want that ability and you want the Explorer patcher, you're going to have to add that to Start 11. Start All Back is the only one that does a little of both, but not enough for me. Uh, if it's enough for you, then by all means. It's sort of a happy medium. It does a lot of the nerdy stuff that OpenShell does, but it doesn't do all the nerdy stuff that OpenShell does. And it also will give you some of the options of Explorer Patcher without needing Explorer Patcher, but not all of the options of Explorer Patcher. So it's just up to you. If you want it all in one program, start all back. Otherwise, I think you're gonna be okay with OpenShell combined with Explorer Patcher, and it's all free. Now when you're messing with this stuff, sometimes you might mess up your windows, but it's not a big deal. So like here, check this out. I just uninstalled OpenShell, and instead of going right back into Windows, I just get this, but I can still press Control-Shift-Escape, and that will bring up this. Then I can end tasks or run new tasks, so if there's any OpenShell stuff still running down here, I'll want to end that task. Don't think there is, so I'm gonna run new task, and I'm gonna run explore.exe. There we go. Now we're back in Windows. And if that doesn't work, a reboot will work. And if it boots back up into the blank page, then you can do Control Shift Escape again. You can run new task. And if you can't get anything to work, type Control. And from here, you can go and uninstall things. So anything that you've recently installed or anything that's causing problems, I mean, just come over here and just do Add or Remove Programs. And then make sure whatever you've installed is uninstalled. Last thing, for just a few more days, we're going to have pretty much everything on the website on sale for 30% off. And this is after I made that angry video about Nintendo. The coupon code is FCK Nintendo, all one word, lowercase, FCK Nintendo. When you put it in, pretty much anything on here is gonna be 30% off, except for the stuff that's print on demand. Like that's print on demand, and a couple of the other t-shirts are print on demand. But most of the stuff, I've got it right over there on the shelf. See all that? All gonna be 30% off. So head over to epicpants.com and get that stuff. I'll see you in the comments. Mm.